we have a radio station group called Mountain Radio, Mountain Country Radio, or uh, sorry, Mountain Radio Group. And between us, well, we basically have uh, three radio stations, one news talk, one, count, one country, and one um, oldies rock station here specifically in Pueblo. So that's who we are. And then today I was uh, asked to talk about, you know, what you don't know about marketing and advertising with YouTube and, um, and how that may hurt your business if you don't know certain things. So, okay, now it's stopped. It's not working. Uh, we may just have to click the forward button. Yeah. Okay, I got it, yep. So, um, just real quick. You know the, the social media or the media landscape has changed a lot in, in um, well it, since the internet so about 20 or so years ago so 50 years ago r roughly right you only had to worry about three media sources news newspaper TV radio that has changed a lot recently because it's you know this is the social media landscape now and it's it's projected to increase in the next five to 10 years. So, you know, gone were the days that all you had to worry about was Facebook or Instagram or, or, or things like that. It's, it's constantly growing as more and more people um, utilize their own media sources, their own media platforms. So something, you know, that's not necessarily gonna get better in the, in the next couple of years. So now the question is, okay, if you were a business, where should you be and why? So this is me uh, explaining why that is. So with regards to if you're a business owner, you actually need both. You need both traditional media and digital social media. And I'll explain a little bit more on why. So, but you don't necessarily need it at all. So the, the, on the traditional media side, the, ones, the major one you really need is radio. And the reason for that is uh, radio's reach is roughly, if you think about it, 12 hours long. People drive, go out to lunch, drive home, are out and about, and they're on the radio for roughly 12 hours uh, as compared to like TV, which is really uh, six hours, roughly 6 p.m. to midnight. Now, as far as social media goes, again, you don't need it all. Um, you want to be on the, on the largest social media platform that, that will give you the best bang for the buck and, and the most reach. So think about that. So that's Facebook and Instagram. I lumped those two together because really uh, Facebook owns Instagram. So it's, it's one and the same. YouTube. And then the next one that's really coming up is LinkedIn. And partly because <clears throat> LinkedIn is where Facebook is currently at uh, in 2008, 2009. So while a lot of people look at LinkedIn as a, a digital resume, <clears throat> that is now changing. They are more doing business. And of course, since the people there are more professional businesses, they're in more of that mindset than even Facebook and Instagram, which is are a lot more social. So this is a lot. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna make this presentation available so you can actually see a lot of the data and research that went with this. Um, um, while the slides is a lot, there's actually a ton of stuff in the notes pages too. So, um, but if you look at it, traditional and social media are, are asymmetric from each other. So as one traditional media is declining, it looks like it's declining, it's still the, um, the one media source that most people attribute some level of uh, success because that's, you know, people are used to if, if, you're, if they hear you on the radio, if they see you on TV, or you have a column in newspaper already, in, in their mind, psychologically, you're, you must be doing great because access to those kind of media is very, very expensive. Same thing with the, um, uh, on the social media side, that has been increasing, and that's largely because you know, a lot of, uh, more and more people are now digital, on digital online. So, I mean, you know, who, who here doesn't have a, a cell phone? or a smartphone, I mean, everybody has at this point. So those are the kind of things to consider as you're going along. Now, new media usages, if you look at some of these stats and numbers, I, I highlighted a couple of ones over there, they're increasing. And businesses are actually getting into social media, are also increasing year by year. 
So whereas before, you know, most businesses like, oh, you know, that's Facebook, that's Instagram. You know, I have my website, I'm good to go. Uh, that is um, gone, frankly. So if you're not in some kind of social media platform and you're, and you're not promoting your businesses, you are at, at a great disadvantage. So um, this one graph here in the bottom where it says how much does social net, um, networking grow year by year? In, in, a, in a six year time frame from 2015 to 2021, it increased over 58%. That is a lot and it's gonna increase more in the next five to 10 years. Um, people on average are, have about eight, so are, are on eight social media platforms. And um, if you're looking at a percentage of Americans, so 72% are on social media. Again, that's supposed to increase more. Uh, projections are you know, upwards to 90% um, by the end of the decade. So these are the things to consider. Now, if you look at it, a lot of people are there and all the different social medias are now fracturing. So um, I, don't know, I don't know if you've heard this, Facebook is uh, largely for the boomer generation, right? Our grandparents are there. Um, Gen X are, are also there, but they're also work, are largely also in Instagram. Millennials are on Instagram, uh, and then Gen Z, pretty much everything and anything you know, across the board. Now, the reason why um, the talk here was more for YouTube is that, if people don't know, YouTube is the number, uh, the second most searchable platform in the world. And the reason for that is that the number one most searchable platform in the world, Google, <clears throat> owns YouTube if you didn't know that. So that's why, and they're quickly catching up to Facebook with regards to um, overall numbers, market share. Now, the big difference with YouTube, well, let me keep going on this. So more and more people are, are getting their information. So um, Facebook has largely replaced newspapers with regards to getting news, I mean, who, who hasn't looked at their newsreel and like, oh, hey, this is what's going on. Um, so that's why I'm saying if you're looking at mixing and matching traditional media versus social and digital media, you know, there goes the newspaper because that's largely being replaced by YouTube or uh, uh, Facebook. And then on the TV side, YouTube is largely replacing them. If you think about it, more and more people are watching video content. Now, if you're a businesses and you're tracking demographics, and I sort of highlighted the 50 to 75K, and, and partly the reason for that is, you know, that's roughly people that would have potential disposable income, 79 to 90% of them are on YouTube. So you wanna be on the platform that will give you the best bang for the buck as far as uh, reach and everything else. <clears throat> it's, um, depending on how you look at it, it's getting worse or better for the upcoming generation, the Gen Z. Almost all of them are actually in some kind of social media platform across the board, and the vast majority of them are also on YouTube. So, so if you're looking at positioning, your, whether if you're a brand new business or a, a more senior mature business, you need to be looking at posturing yourself already <clears throat> for that shift, because this is the next generation that's uh, coming up. <clears throat> and then I know there's a ton of statistics here, again, uh, I'll make this presentation available. That way you can actually have the raw data to actually make better uh, decisions according it. Now, generationally, I'll, I'll talk to, uh, a bit about this. Like, where are all the, all the different generations? Where are they at? So depending on the type of business you are, well, you may want to be on that platform. Um, you know, baby boomers, Gen Xs, Facebook, Facebook and YouTube. Adults, uh, millennials, Gen, Z, Gen Y, Instagram, and YouTube, and then of course uh, the Gen Z, the newest generation, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. And actually, uh, there's actually a newer, newer generation beyond Gen Z. I think they're calling them Gen Alpha. I, I don't make the names. I, I just follow the rules. Um, so, learning to know how to market to each generation will help you. And this is some of the, uh, the data that's out there on how to actually market to them. If you're marketed to a baby boomer, there's, they're still largely traditional media, uh, TV, newspaper, and radio. And they're more inclined to actually use the, the digital side for research so that they can actually go to a, a, a box store and buy whatever they want. 
uh, they're, they're still largely uh, non-digital natives or compliant in, in, in that sense. Gen X and, and on are a little bit better, but uh, Gen X, they like tutorials that, on, on average. They want to know how to's and, and whatnot. And they're largely 50-50 if you look at it. Okay, they'll, they'll do stuff online, but they also have no qualms about going into a box store. Uh, millennials, probably the first generation that's you know, like more comfortable ordering stuff online than anything else. And then of course, Gen Z is like, um, not only are we comfortable about ordering stuff online, feel free to use our data and I'm, we're gonna penalize you if you don't use our data properly to offer me better stuff. So those are the kind of things to consider when you're, you're looking at marketing to different generations depending on uh, your business. So why YouTube? Well, here's some of the data uh, uh, with regards to that. So I don't know if you, this is the, roughly the rankings of um, who's who in popular search engines in the, in the world. The last two are uh, China and Russia specifically. Uh, but if you look at it, most of them are, are U.S. Uh, American based because, frankly, we, we, we kicked off, pioneered the Internet, which is, which is why China is actually um, trying to heavily influence 5G. It's because of that. So think about that in the next five to ten years, how that's going to evolve. But <clears throat> if you look at it, a lot more people are also wanting to see products and services via video and YouTube is optimized for that. So if you're not on YouTube, you're not looking at using it for branding and marketing for your business, you may want to start thinking about doing it now, sooner than later. Let's see. Uh, so uh, a couple of YouTube 101s, uh, I'll just go ahead and skip through a bunch of this, uh, just in you know, sake for time. But there are certain things you need to know about YouTube and there's certain different milestones you need to achieve to start unlocking the different benefits from it. One of the bigger ones are actually uh, 100 subscribers will actually allow you to custom make the URL for your, your business or brand. So that's pretty much like the first milestone <clears throat> that you, you need and want. That way you can, instead of having a UVWXVL um, URL, you can actually brand it to say Silverback Consulting would be the URL for that YouTube channel. Uh, the next real big milestone is 1,000 subscribers plus 4,000 viewing hours within 365 days. That unlocks monetization, which means other people are now gonna start putting ads. Well, let me rephrase that. People will start putting ads on your channel, especially if it starts getting more popular, regardless. But now you can actually start getting ad revenue for your channel, which then becomes an additional source of income um, for your business. So things to consider when, whenever you're, you're looking at doing stuff like that. And then um, <clears throat> other, other milestones are there, but really the big milestone, what, bless you, that most people talk about is the 100,000 subscriber milestone, and that's where you get the nice, pretty plaque up there, and of course, major bragging rights. And at that point, you're really seriously into YouTube to the point that you can probably, um, if you had a job, quit your job and do this more full time. So that's, that's the, the rough piece of that. And there is a formula for success in YouTube. And that's roughly uh, first or second bullet there. YouTube success equals thumbnail plus title plus uh, topic or content. Um, and it is in that order, uh, surprisingly. Most people are like, well, shouldn't my content be number one? It's like, uh, no. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit more. And then these are the type of uh, YouTube videos there. Uh, there's the long form content, standard content, and short form content. Things to consider with regards to the different content is, is that longer form, of course, is better because it allows you more monetization opportunity, so hence more ads <clears throat> that could be on the video. Standard content, well, more people can now consume more of it, but of course, that limits the number of ads you have. And then, of course, short form content, they're actually trying to figure out how to do ads in a set, you know, 60 seconds or less. Now, it's actually possible because most ads these days, uh, think radio, TV, uh, even um, uh, YouTube ads, they're 30 seconds or less. And there's a reason why they're 30 seconds or less. Um, and, and then 
having a YouTube video allows you to actually be better at uh, other social media platforms because you can then readily share those kind of content for you. Okay, uh, I'll skip to a little bit about these examples because I'll go into a little bit more in depth in, in some of this, but some of the things to consider. Now, most people won't, typically you won't get analytics on their YouTube channel or their video unless you subscribe to, I subscribe to uh, TubeBuddy, <clears throat> and then there's another one out there called VidIQ. They will actually start providing you analytics information on your YouTube channel when you have those kind of services in it. The, um, most of them are free, and then of course you need to uh, go to the premium in order to unlock other uh, information associated with that. But like, so I use Tube, uh, TubeBuddy, and this gives me the best practices for the videos. So of course, the more of those best practices you have, the more likely your uh, YouTube video and channel will be successful. And then, um, you know, it's all about viewerships. It's not, once you hit a certain threshold and subscribers numbers, it's all about viewing, uh, viewing hours for um, your channel or, or your video. Here's another example, uh, tags. Now, even YouTube says they've actually uh, are going away or the tags are not as helpful anymore as they once about. You know, these are hashtags and what, and, and um, so use them, don't use them. It, but if you use them, it actually helps you with tracking your videos and your channel uh, and, and seeing the different uses for tags for that. And then lastly, descriptions. Um, those are additional ways for you to promote other products and services, <clears throat> promote other businesses that you're partnered with. Um, those are the kind of uses that you can do for that. Oh, I did, I did wanna, forgot the disclaimer. So I'm, I'm not necessarily advocating for any of these channels. I just use them as an example because some of these channels have, have actually blown up over time. Uh, this, this one channel particularly, I've been tracking them since their inception. Um, they went from zero to 800 and some K subscribers in a year and a half. Uh, on average, they do a live three hour show every night, late night. They're, the number of viewers that they have there are 10,000 live for the entire three hours. 10,000, over 10,000 people actually watching their viewership, their, their video live all over the world. So <clears throat> they quickly blew up and you know, granted they, they, they do a lot of controversial stuff, but I mean, just for example, two, uh, was it 270,000 viewers just on this one video alone. Um, their channel, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. And then they do a lot of that stuff. So I mean, in, in a year and a half time, they've had over two, 293 million views. It, it, that's, a, that's a crazy amount. And like I said, they went from zero to 877,000 subscribers, uh, over 1,500 videos. They were really, this is a conscious effort of cranking out tons of video and content regarding it. And they've gotten to the point now that they ha they, they've actually expanded further. Um, let's see. So year and a half, uh, they were live streaming for three hours long. I mean, <clears throat> that's, that, that's the nor normal content for a radio um, and, and TV. Again, they're doing, they're doing the best practices out there. They're doing timestamps, they're doing links, they're doing hashtags, uh, everything and anything you can think of. They're actually pro pro uh, promoting merchandise. They have affiliates. I mean, so YouTube itself can be a, a, a business in itself, but the question is, is, is now you can actually do the same thing for your own business to help supplement and complement that. Plenty of monetization examples. Okay, now these are the three major things on a YouTube video that you need to make sure you have, and that's basically end screens or end cards. So you know, at the very end, you would have um, video p pieces like this. So you, you want to recommend a video. You want to make sure you, uh, you're sending them to their, to uh, the playlist, 
and then you know having your logo or your channel there uh, as an example and then there's info cards so there's like little these little eyes uh, learn more about education those are called info cards and you can actually pre-position them throughout the entire video where you can have people um, look at videos go to websites uh, have them do different things for you and again it's just another way uh, think of them as as in movie commercials that's basically what they are and then YouTube shorts I don't know if you've heard but you know there's a there's a three-way battle going on for supremacy on the short form video content. That's TikTok, that's Facebook and Instagram, and then that's YouTube. So all three of them are, are vying for that. Right now, TikTok actually pioneered the short form content. So YouTube and Facebook are, you know, uh, are trying to catch up. And uh, just just a little bit shout out, you know, uh, most people don't know or uh, know, don't know this, but TikTok is a Chinese based company. <clears throat> so, start your, starting your YouTube in three easy steps. So these are the three T's. Sorry, I, it's actually ten steps, but you know, yeah, a little <laughs> clickbait there. Um, but the three T's are thumbnail, title, and topic. And these are the, some of the things that you really want to go do. So that's the nine, and then I gave you a bonus of a tenth. So if you want to do YouTube in a budget, on a budget, this is how you would. Uh, uh, gear up in order to uh, accomplish that. So thumbnail, lots of different things here. The reason why people harp on thumbnail is that everybody uh, um, judges a book by their cover. And the very first thing that they see is your thumbnail on your YouTube. And people typically decide within three seconds whether if they're gonna click on your YouTube video or not. So this is an example of thumbnail. And these are the, the main best practices. You know, having some kind of image, having words, and then having a contrasting background that highlights the image and the words associated with it. Now, um, this is a lot, but this is a thumbnail cheat sheet just to help people <clears throat> get a, an idea of how complicated this is. I mean, it's gotten to the point now, a, a new industry popped up that all they do is crank out thumbnails for YouTube producers because that's to do it properly it's a lot so I'm you know I'm leave you to uh, um, take a look at this cheat sheet a little bit more but the, the basis of this is that you want to portray some kind of video or some kind of image with emotion you want to have all the words on the left side of the video sorry maybe right side if you're watching this um, that's because most people read left to right and there's, there's stuff that YouTube has like um, time and other icons on the right side. So that's why you don't want to have words on the right side. And then, you know, these are the kind of things you, you need to be uh, worried and concerned about. Now, title. Bless you. Um, most people try to incorporate their title within the thumbnail. That's why in, in some cases the title becomes superfluous. But now it's, an, uh, it's a, an additional way for you to convey a, a additional information and, and to help drive more traffic so that they're more curious about what's going on about your, your, your thumbnail. It's like, oh, great, you attract them with a picture. Now it's like, okay, is it worth for me to really click on it? That's, that's, a, that's what you want to look at thumb, um, titles for as a supporting way for your, for your business. And then these are just some of the ways to do that some of the strategies, you know, um, using contrasting words, talking about predictions in the future and, and, and whatnot. Again, gave a little title cheat sheet. There's a lot of stuff in here, <clears throat> but all of these help, you know, will help you make your, uh, your YouTube video also more popular because a lot of this falls into the, uh, the dreaded algorithm that will that basically decides what people see. Let's see. And then lastly, the topic. So most people say, well, shouldn't this be the first thing you need to go do? Granted, you need to understand and know your topic. But if you have a business, you already know your topic. It's about your business, it's about your product or services. 
So there's not a lot more that you need to worry about with regards to that. So really, now you just need to crank out the content and, and then actually start doing this. But again, your content needs to do an emotional trigger in, in, in some form or fashion. You need to, um, there's strategies like information gap theory that uh, will allow you to hook your audience to whatever product or service you want to go do. And then, um, and then basically, you want to do a show and tell. Uh, sorry, you want to do a show, don't tell. So that's, those are the kind of things you want to do. Because again, you provide more information. You know, so if picture is worth a thousand words, how many words is a video worth? Ten times that. 100 times that. So you, you want to think of that way that you're, you're telling a story by the video that you are portraying, not saying it out loud, which is why this presentation is, has a ton of pictures for obvious reason. Again, some cheat sheet on what you should do, uh, how you need to frame it, you know, the lighting. There's actually a science associated with this. And a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and get on the camera, start talking. Uh, good luck with that. Most, most people freeze, actually, when on a camera. And uh, oh, I'm, I budgeted an hour to do my, my recording session. And then six hours later, it's like, oh, I'm still recording. And then you have another six to 12 hours of editing after that. So those are the kind of things you need, you need to be aware of. And then lastly, if you are on a budget, this is some of the gear that I would recommend. A lot of people say, oh, well, do I need a, a digital SLR camera? Actually, no, you don't. I mean, you already have the best camera on your hands, more, more than likely, an, uh, an iPhone or a Samsung. And then you do need lighting, and you can get complicated and fancy about it. Um, if you're doing a lot of movements, you want a gimbaled mount to Make sure everything is steady because the worst thing you can do is watching a video and it's going like this. <laughs> you, uh, people will tend to click out of that within 10 seconds. Uh, I guarantee that. And um, there's editors out there. Uh, most people use Canva. Uh, some of these are, are, are actually free. So use them all out. And, and they'll do a bunch of different things from removing the background and, and um, putting different fonts and everything else. Uh, I, we use the DaVinci Resolve for video editing suite. And it's, um, it's, the free version is very popular. But for you know, a couple hundred dollars more, um, you get a, a, a really good quality um, video editing suite that will do uh, 4K even um, quality. And then if you're in a budget, so like a mini lapel lavalier mic typically will, will suit the bill. But if you want a more higher end, um, we use uh, SM, SM7s, uh, sure. That's the default um, microphone for most of the professional YouTube channels that are out there. Now, that's roughly it. I want to like provide additional questions, but uh, just a, a little bit about us. This is who we are. We're the Mountain Radio Group. Uh, so Mountain, uh, all three radio stations are actually here in Pueblo. Um, we are roughly the fifth or so largest transmitter. Uh, the, the Power Talk 1040 and Mountain Country have uh, about 15,000 watt transmitters, and we're, we basically are up and down the front range on, on the AM side. And then we have FM that supplements uh, the two cities, largely Colorado Springs and Pueblo. We also do a lot of digital. So this is uh, just to give you an idea of the reach of uh, what, who we are and what we can do. We also do a lot of digital services. So think um, geofencing, if you've heard what that is, Facebook and Instagram, uh, retargeting, so uh, behavioral network targeting for your business. Display ad network contextual uh, retargeting. We do OTT, so we can actually put your ad on YouTube and uh, other platforms like Hulu, Disney Plus. Uh, I think Prime now. You, you know, you have commercials that can, you can watch ahead. Of and then, lastly, this is me. If you ever want to get in touch, we're here to help.